Hey everybody, it's Derek Clamartin from CodeOpinion.com. As with anything in our industry that gains some traction by the wider community, it develops some misconceptions. Vertical slice architecture falls exactly into this trap. But don't worry, I'm going to demystify some of these misconceptions, why they exist, and set the record straight. Easily the number one misconception, not even close, this is a question, comment, or confusion, is this idea of share nothing, or that how do you share between slices or between features? I think the reason why there's this misconception or confusion to how this works is because people want features to be completely independent. When that's not really the case, oftentimes there's relation between the two. That could be workflow, or that could be just commands or queries and a subset of them. That's actually what the feature is. And this is actually pretty common. I'll give you some examples of this, but before I do, I'd like to thank Event Store for sponsoring this video. EventStoreDB is a new category of operational database built for event sourcing, CQRS, and event-driven microservices. For more on EventStoreDB, check out the link in the description. The most common example of this is your underlying domain or data model. This thing is shared across features. Sure, your features are given use cases, specific use cases, but they may all be sharing that same underlying domain or data model. The key aspect to this is you don't have that domain model or data model that's shared between the entire system. No, it's very specific, it's vertical, in what those features that actually need it. That should be very narrow, very focused. Another way of thinking about this is let's say we had some validation between features. But there's specific validation that we need to do in two specific features pretty much the same way. Well, just create something that's shared between the two features. That's fine. How do you do that? Just use the same class, whatever it is that you're sharing that you're gonna have within those two features. There's nothing wrong with this. Not each need feature needs to be completely independent in what it's using. It's just narrowing that focus. A different way of looking at it is let's say these two features, they're using one particular way to validate, and then the other three features, maybe they have something completely different. That's kind of the benefit of having things by feature, by verticals, is that you can decide what that implementation looks like. Maybe something shared between a couple of, or a few of them, maybe they're not. And this relates to what I think is probably the second most common misconception, which is there's little or no abstraction. So this misconception I think exists because people are generally thinking about layers. And if they're thinking about vertical slices, what happens to the layers? Well, they can still be there. Nobody's saying not to use layers. Nobody's not saying to not use abstractions. So for example, if you had some type of data access layer or whatever that was, that's not to saying that if you have some type of vertical slice or feature that you don't have that abstraction of data access. You can. Where I think this gets a little bit confusing is because now you're deciding specifically in a given vertical slice or feature how you want to do that data access. A lot of this now comes down to coupling. Is The question is, do you need the abstraction? Maybe you do, maybe you don't. But the idea that you don't have to use one or that you shouldn't or that there's no layers is a misconception. Here's an example. Let's say you're using an ORM for your data access. And all these vertical slices, these features, let's say there's a dozen of them that actually depend on this ORM or an instance of the ORM. Do you need the abstraction? Maybe you do, maybe you don't. If you needed to change that underlying uh, database or ORM or whatever you wanted to do, how much work is it to actually change those dozen places? This is very different if you have uh, some type of data access layer that's coupled hundreds of times so the, the focus becomes more narrow. And that's what people then start thinking about, well, do I need the abstraction or can I just change it when I need it? If it's testable and you don't need to create your own type or own abstraction around it, maybe you don't. But that's not to say that there's little to no abstraction. It's really up to you. And this leads us to another misconception, which is there's a low barrier to entry. Meaning that if you want to get it to vertical slice architecture, it's a lot easier than say clean architecture. I disagree with this because I think Fundamentally, it's not about clean architecture or vertical slice architecture or event-driven architecture or all these different types of architectures you ultimately use that make your architecture. Fundamentally, it's understanding what the problems are, why you're applying certain patterns or certain concepts. And oftentimes this relates to trade-offs around coupling and cohesion. That's really what you're battling most of the time, and there's just different ways of doing it. So I don't think there's a lower barrier to entry with vertical slice architecture. I think maybe on the surface it seems that way, but you can screw up anything that you don't really understand. Now another misconception, and I kind of alluded to this a little bit earlier, is that features don't impact other features. The reason why this misconception exists is because this idea, incorrectly, that they're share nothing, that each feature is gonna be, or vertical, is gonna be completely independent. 
It's just not the case. You're going to have some coupling between features. Oftentimes, this could be business processes or workflows, where one thing kind of kicks off a business process, and then it hands it off to another feature. You're going to have coupling there. How you couple is a different story, and I'll get to that in a second. But the idea that you're not going to have one feature affect another feature is not really the case. So why is that important? Because you're less likely to have features impact other features because you're not going to have some massive layer that's coupled to every feature. That's the whole point of vertical slices and focusing on kind of the utility of each one and how you want to implement that rather than having your entire system depend on one data access um, layer or whatever the case may be. You're splitting things up. So again, you're controlling coupling. So that's why kind of this notion of features won't affect other features. It's not that they won't, it's that you won't have one feature that's specific to one specific use case. It won't likely affect another feature that's completely unrelated. But you absolutely can have one feature affect another feature that's directly related. And lastly, to piggyback off the last one, is it requires messaging to decouple features. So something like pub, sub, and topics, or messaging and queues. And this misconception is often because that's how it's actually implemented or given in examples, or you see videos like me explaining event-driven architecture, pub, sub, or using some type of orchestration to work on business processes and workflows. So when you have something in one feature happen, you publish an event and some other feature can pick that up and continue on the workflow, kind of like what I was mentioning earlier. But that's not necessarily how things have to be implemented. Asynchronous messaging is just a way to remove the temporal coupling. You're gonna have some form of coupling, some degree of coupling. Messaging is just one way of handling it. But by no means is messaging required in a vertical slice architecture. Now, the last thing to touch on isn't a misconception at all. I think it's actually kind of the reverse, which is that there's not enough emphasis on when you might wanna consider a vertical slice architecture, which is really, you wanna focus on use cases. It isn't to me very applicable or something you should be striving for if all you're developing is CRUD. And that's because your use cases are your features. Your features are your vertical slices. The idea that you have some type of capabilities, your system provides some type of behaviors. The behaviors are what you're focusing on. That's the idea of organizing your code around these use cases, around these features, around these behaviors, these capabilities. What does your system do? If it's just create, read, update, delete, and that's how you're gonna organize your code, Sure, I guess, but a lot of the value here is that your code is expressive about what it actually does. So hopefully I cleared the air a little bit on some of the misconceptions that you might have read or watched in videos. I hope this gives a better illustration about what vertical slice architecture is and isn't. If you enjoyed videos like this and topics like this and you wanna chat with other software developers, you can get access to my private Discord server by joining my channel. The link's in the description on how to join. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any other thoughts or questions, make sure to leave a comment and please subscribe for more videos on software architecture and design. Thanks.